This video will focus on deconstructing media messages, images, and the amount of coverage given to sport. And so we'll look specifically at the differences in coverage for sports across various different types of media. And we'll look at how the coverage given reflects the value placed on sport. And we'll also look a little bit at some of the language and techniques used to uh, convey a message to the audience or the readers uh, via metaphors and other techniques. So a quick overview of, of media and its, its impact, I guess, is that viewers and readers' opinions tend to dictate the types of stories in mass media. So the viewer will place a value on a particular type of sport and they will tune in and watch or they will read particular stories in the newspaper based on that. And so if the audience is not satisfied with what's being presented, then they will not watch or read. And so this can determine the sports that are presented to the audience. Newspapers, magazines and television stations generate lots of income by selling advertising space. And this drives the media's coverage as well. And of course, it's in the media owner's interests to promote stories that are entertaining and that have a social impact. So we'll look first at the differences in coverage for different sports across various print and electronic media. There is a lot of difference in terms of coverage for various sports in newspapers or print media. If you look at the images on the screen, you'll notice that I've put up the back pages of a major newspaper, the Daily Telegraph in New South Wales. Generally speaking, the, the sports stories that are on the very back of the newspaper would be considered the most important stories. Uh, these are situated there to try and entice the reader to purchase the newspaper. And you'll notice at the back of the newspaper, you'll, you'll see large images, action shots, scores, and headlines that have persuasive language to try and entice the reader to read on and, and even purchase the newspaper. And you can see on the screen, you can see sports prioritized or the value placed on sport shown through the size of the images and where they are situated on this very back page of the newspaper. You can also see the trend that many of the stories uh, situated at the very back of the newspaper are male dominated. We're not seeing all that much female sport presented to us in this part of the newspaper. A lot of the image are of action shots and you can attribute this to the, the value that people in Australia place on contact sports, aggression and power and so on. And you can see that the nature of the headlines are very, very sensationalized. They're using persuasive language, exaggerated language to try and entice the reader to keep on reading. You can see even on the front page of the newspaper when sporting events are large and attract a lot of attention, they will be situated on the very front page of the newspaper. And you can see here that State of Origin, Rugby League is on the front page of the Sydney newspapers at that time. You can see the image on the left shows a shot in action in the game and you can see it's a tackle, there's a lot of contact, it looks quite aggressive and the headline crushed really emphasizes this. And the Daily Telegraph on the right, you can see the cricket and the rugby league together on the front page, emphasizing the value placed on traditional sports, sports that have a British tradition or an English tradition in Australia, sports that are male dominated and sports that involve high levels of contact seem to be placed at very high value in Australia. And we, we can see here the differences in coverage for different sports across electronic media. And we see the same kinds of trends with streaming services like KO and pay television like Foxtel. You can see that as part of their packages, they do advertise certain sports over others because of the perceived value or popularity of those sports in our society. You can see that KO certainly promotes rugby league and AFL as part of their packages and likewise with Foxtel you can see that offering every NRL and AFL game is part of the promotional package for people to take up pay TV 
and this coverage is widespread across their platforms. There are dedicated channels for the AFL and the NRL on Foxtel, and this shows a high level of value, a high level of interest in these sports. And this is consistent with the online platforms of the newspapers and other sports news services. You'll notice that sport is presented in a particular way to favour or to present more of certain sports over others. You can see the menu at the top even lays out the sports in accordance with how much news there is available to those sports. And if you have a look at the top, most of those sports do have a tradition in Australia. They are generally male dominated and the majority of them are contact sports. And you can see on here, there is a story involving a female athlete, but it does happen to be a story involving something other than her actual swimming ability. So you can see that the stories that are popping up for women might not necessarily be about the sport, whereas if we look at the, the rugby league stories are focused on the sport itself. And you can see here, just as a summary, general trends in coverage, male-dominated sport does receive more coverage in print and electronic media, and the images and headlines are larger. They're situated closer to the back, which is considered prime position. Sometimes they're even on the front pages. And the images for males are generally action shots and females are usually in training or posing. And we also see contact sports tending to receive more attention. Australian society tends to celebrate aggression, power, speed and collisions as part of our sporting culture. But we also see traditional sports receiving more coverage and sports that align with Australia's cultural traditions. So NRL, AFL, cricket, rugby football or soccer and tennis. Many of these sports have a history that date back to our English origins. So they've been around for a long time and they have a greater connection to our culture. And sports that involve international competition are generally prioritised and this can promote tribalism and national pride and identity. Olympic sports, the Football World Cup, the Ashes Cricket, Grand Slams and Davis Cup in tennis tend to be uh, well covered and prioritised in our print and electronic media. And we see sports where Australia is generally successful receiving a lot of coverage as well. We also see sports that promote a regional or suburban identity prioritised and, and given a lot of coverage. And we see this through state of origin and we see it through the national competition such as the NRL and the AFL. Now we'll talk a little bit about metaphors and language use. A metaphor is a figure of speech in which a term or phrase is applied to something to which it is not literally applicable in order to suggest a resemblance. So it's using one thing to describe another, but it must not be alike in reality. Metaphors are used in sport regularly in print media, TV and online. And you can see on the screen the link or the relationship between sport and war is often a common metaphor used in the media. And you can see here, epic battle is used often to signify a confrontation between two teams. And you can see the link to battle or war is something that's used regularly throughout. And this is used to enhance the connection to the public and attract interest from readers. And it might be to show a particular importance of a sport, a sport that is valued highly in our society. And sport is often compared to war, but this is usually male-dominated sports and contact sports. And they're often used to sensationalise sports, to make things seem more important or more pressing than others. And you can see as I move through that language use is common in the media to try and enhance the sports story and try and connect with the reader. So cliches will be used, metaphors are used regularly throughout for a variety of reasons and you'll see many other language techniques used to try and make a story more important or more sensational by adding emphasis and exaggerating to try to get people to engage more with the story and get them to feel connected to the story. In terms of male and female sport it's important to understand that they are presented differently in the sport. Images and headlines are very different 
when we talk about male and female coverage in sport, often males will, will receive larger headlines and larger images. Females may be objectified and it may focus more on appearance over ability. And it, the female coverage might depend on perhaps their appearance and marketability. And you can see these stereotypes and inequities that come out through media coverage. Male sport is often deemed powerful, aggressive, competitive, and these are attributes that might be valued by our society. And so we will see certain prime time coverage in TV media or even online as well allocated to sports that are perceived to have more value. So AFL and NRL at prime time between 7.30 and 9 p.m. And you might see netball and the W League played at times when there are less people watching on TV. And so we can attribute this to the amount of coverage and also to the value placed on the sport. And you can see that many people in society have spoken up about the issue of the lack of coverage. And it is an issue because we have many world champion female athletes who are not getting the coverage that they require or deserve. And this is affecting their ability to earn money and be professional and get the exposure that they require to be successful. And you can see in this little table here, the amount of coverage allocated to male sport versus female sport. You can just see the gaps in that are quite substantial. And we also see coverage focused towards, as mentioned, contact sports, but we also see violent images and sensational images being focused on more than others. And some sports stars tend to get more coverage than others because of this. And we also see controversy in sport being covered because people like to read stories that involve controversy. And so these stories will certainly be valued and, and receive more coverage than stories that are not so controversial. Thank you very much for listening.